Hi guys, welcome to Master Chemistry. So in today's video, I am finally going to make some fluorescent copper complexes that I have been talking about in the past few videos and this is the final one in the series. So if you don't want to miss out on anything, I strongly recommend you to watch the two previous ones. The complexes that I am going to be making today consist of copper, iodine and pyridine arranged in a pretty unique way that look like just some random white and yellow powders under normal light, but when subjected to UV, they emit beautiful yellow, green or blue light, and I think that just this makes synthesizing them a very rewarding experience. For the whole synthesis, I am going to need a ton of different chemicals, and the first and most important one is potassium iodide, which was generously provided to me by a great chemistry supply shop, BM Chemistry. BM Chemistry sells a lot of hard to get chemicals of high quality along with laboratory equipment and lots of other things, so I recommend you to check out their page, to which I provided a link in the description. So thanks BM Chemistry very much for providing reagents for my videos, and now let's move on to collecting the other ingredients. Apart from the potassium iodide, I am also going to need some sulfuric acid, anhydrous sodium sulfide, some acetone, some copper sulfate pentahydrate, and pyridine that I made in a previous video. I know that this whole list looks pretty big and complicated, contradictory to this video's title, but you can find most of this stuff in a normal all online store, or make it from scratch, just like the pyridine that I made in a previous video. Anyway, now that I have all of the ingredients, I can't make the complexes just yet, and that's because I need to make a precursor to them, which is copper 1 iodide. Copper 1 iodide is not as widely available as most of the other ingredients, so I decided to make it myself, it shouldn't be that hard, and it will show that the complexes can easily be made in an amateur lab. I firstly have to prepare a 15% sulfuric acid solution, and to do that, I got myself a small beaker and my scale, which is in an even worse state than before, because a random drop of acid fell onto it when I wasn't looking, and it managed to eat away a small portion of the screen, which to me isn't too much of a problem, but you guys can decide if I should use this scale or switch to a new one in the comments. Anyway, I weighed out 7.5 grams of 96% sulfuric acid, and after that was done, I measured out around 37 milliliters of distilled water, and now it was time to add it into the sulfuric acid. I could add the water into the sulfuric acid directly, but I wanted to avoid the risk of boiling the acid and people yelling at me in the comments, so I poured the water into a larger beaker, and then, under strong steering, I slowly added the sulfuric acid. After that was done, I was now left with almost 50 ml of about 15% sulfuric acid, which I will use in just a second. The second step in making the copper iodide is to prepare a solution of sodium sulfide. To make it, I weighed out 2.9 grams of anhydrous sodium sulfate in a beaker and added an arbitrary amount of water to dissolve it. When the solution was nice and clear, I measured out 14 milliliters of the dilute sulfuric acid solution that I made and added it into the beaker. The addition generates a little bit of sulfur dioxide, which to me smells like danger, and to avoid it, I turn on my fume hood, put on a respirator, and now it was time to prepare the next solution. I weighed out 7.2 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate in a small beaker, and added about 30 milliliters of distilled water to dissolve it, which turned out to be harder than expected, but after 10 minutes of manually steering this thing, 
I managed to finally resolve most of the crystals and now it was time to combine the solutions. After pouring one to the other, nothing spectacular happened and that is because to actually make the copper iodide, I have to prepare a final solution. Fortunately, it consists only of potassium iodide and distilled water and to make it, I just weighed out 5 grams of the potassium iodide and dissolved it in a small amount of distilled water. It dissolved pretty quickly and when the solution was clear, I was now ready to finally make the copper iodide. I got the first solution onto my hot plate and after turning on strong steering, I proceeded to slowly add the solutions together. Immediately upon the addition, the color changed from blue to pale brown, which is actually the color of copper iodide and to me, it looks oddly similar to chocolate milk. Copper iodide is insoluble in water and because of that, after I added all of the potassium iodide, the mixture became pretty thick. I now had to filter out the copper iodide and to do that, I just ran the mixture through my vacuum filter. I also washed it with a lot of distilled water to remove any impurities and if this was a normal product, it would now be time to dry it in the oven, but copper iodide is one of these pesky compounds that break down upon contact with the air and to stop it from decaying, it has to be kept wet at all times. But how I'm going to know how much I've made if it is wet? Well, I don't need to, because I adjusted the weights of the ingredients so that I should be left with around 5 grams of copper iodide, which is exactly how much I need for the next step in making the copper complexes. And speaking of that, I will firstly make the easiest and most straightforward to synthesize complex that is stable in air and fluoresces a bright yellow color. This is its formula and on a molecular level it looks like this. It kind of reminds me of cubane, but that's probably because I have been wanting to make actual cubane for months now and literally every cube-like object resembles cubane to me. Under normal light, the complex looks like a white powder and it is the only one of the three complexes which can be dried and stored in the air for a long time. To make it, I will of course need to prepare a few solutions and to make the first one, I got the copper iodide that I prepared a while ago and transferred it into a beaker. To get as much as I can, I run the filtrate to the vacuum filter again and combine the recovered copper iodide with the rest in the beaker. To finish preparing the first solution, I weighed out 7.5 grams of potassium iodide and added it into the beaker. The solution ended up looking like chocolate milk once again, but it is actually supposed to look like that. I transferred it to a different beaker with clean walls for you guys to see better. I also turned on the steering and now it was time to make the last solution. It consists of 20 ml of acetone that I measured out and added into a beaker followed by 5 ml of my homemade pyridine. To finally make the complex, I just slowly combined the solutions under strong steering. At first nothing seemed to happen, but as time went on, the mixture became whiter and whiter, transforming from chocolate milk to yogurt, because the complex was precipitating out of the solution and forming a thick slurry. To check its fluorescence, I turned off the lights, got myself my DIY UV lightsaber, and when I turned it on, the solution started to give up a very nice yellow glow and I think that this is the first and hopefully the last time when I said nice yellow in my life. Now to separate and purify the complex, I vacuum filtered it and under UV light it looked pretty incredible. 
I then washed it with a lot of water to remove any impurities and after drying it on the filter for a while, I got it out onto a piece of paper and broke it into many small pieces, which also looked very nice under UV light. To dry it, I put it into my oven under very low heat for a few hours, and in the meantime, I wanted to prepare an ampule with some fluorescent water inside. To do that, I got some of the steel wet fluorescent complex into a test tube, followed by a small amount of water, broke it up into smaller pieces, and now it was time to seal the ampule using a blowtorch. My small blowtorch couldn't heat the glass enough that it becomes soft evenly, and also I had to balance holding it and a pair of pliers above my camera, which was quite exhausting, and after a few minutes of painfully hitting this thing, I managed to produce this abomination, which could work as an ampule if it didn't have a tiny invisible hole right at its top. I was slightly annoyed at this, and for the second attempt, I tried a different method of making the ampule, which seemed to work much better. I didn't record it, but I made a pretty nice ampule using it, and now it was time to fill it, and seal it up. To do that, I broke the previous failed ampule using a pair of pliers and transferred its contents into the new one. I then sealed it using my blowtorch and after it cooled down, it looked like it didn't have any holes, but when I picked it up and played with it for a while, it somehow started leaking its contents. By now, I really had enough of making these ampules and fortunately, I remembered that vials exist, and I even have a few of them. With that in mind, I proceeded to obliterate the leaking ampule by smashing it into the ground. It was pretty tough, but gave up eventually, and it was really satisfying to break. After letting my frustration out on an innocent ampule, I really wanted to make a glowing vial, but when I got around to making it, the complex was already dry, and in that form, it really didn't want to mix with the water, and gave a pretty bad result. To improve it, I have to make some more of the complex and use it when it is still wet, but now that my current supply is dry, I wanted to weigh it, and do some experiments with it. I took it out of the oven, and now it was time to crush it into a fine powder, and to do that, I used my trusty mortar, and under UV light, the grinding looked very nice. After I was done, I was left with a lot of a very fine white powder, which I now wanted to weigh to know how much I have. It turns out that I have about 5.4 grams of it, which is a pretty nice amount. I got some of it into a vial for long term storage, and I wanted to use the rest to make some fluorescent paint. I thought that if the powder grows very nicely when it's dry, it would behave similarly when it is mixed with linseed oil, but when I did that, it stopped fluorescing completely. I painted one of my cotton swab masterpieces with it, and hoped that if I would dry it in an oven, it would glow again, which unfortunately didn't happen. This is probably due to me trying to be quick, and turning the temperature up to high, which ended up cooking the complex and stopping it from fluorescing. Maybe if I allowed it to dry normally, it would work better, but oh well. After two failed experiments, I now wanted to do something that would work, so I chose to make some of the yellow complex to fill up a vial again, but for some reason when I made it, it turned into a disgusting brown sludge that didn't grow at all. I was quite sad, because not only my chemistry didn't work, but I was also running low on pyridine, and I absolutely didn't want to make it from vitamin B3 again, so the next day, I went absolute Sigma Aldrich Ultra Clean Lab mode, and made sure that everything that I do was as perfect as it could be. I came to the conclusion that I screwed up something with the copper iodide, so for the next run, I prepared a new sulfuric acid solution 
which was precisely 15% this time, and even cleaned up my sink water bucket to prevent any contamination. I also very strictly followed the procedure and filtered the copper iodide using gravity filtration to prevent it from coming into contact with the air. After all of this careful preparation, I was finally able to make some more of the yellow complex. I sealed it in a vial and I gotta say that it looks quite nice under UV light. It could grow brighter if I had a different frequency light source that is not overwhelmingly violet, but I didn't want to spend a fortune on it, so this one has to do. Anyway, now that I made the yellow complex, there are technically two still ahead of me, but they are a little bit trickier to handle. You see, they have more pyridine molecules per copper atom than the yellow one, and that makes them quite unstable, meaning that they can turn into the yellow complex and lose their unique colors quite easily. They also cannot be handled dry or even slightly wet, and the only way to store them for a long time is in a weak pyridine solution in water. The color that they give off is green or blue, but here it is also a bit of a problem because I already did a few test runs for this video to make sure that everything is working and I never seemed to be able to make the blue one and its synthesis always resulted in the formation of the green complex. If you guys know how to make the blue one you can tell me in the comments and now it is time to make the green complex. Its synthesis is pretty easy I will also be doing it on a pretty small scale since I only want it for the vial and to make it I firstly prepared a solution of about half a gram of the wet copper iodide and 0.6 grams of potassium iodide. I then got myself a test tube which I filled with a milliliter of pyridine and a small amount of water. I then added the pyridine solution to the copper iodide one and similarly to before, a brown precipitate started to form. At first it didn't fluoresce at all, but after letting the mixture react for a few minutes, the precipitate turned more yellow than brown which was well, not good and maybe even slightly worse, but when I shined a new light on the yellow precipitate, it started to fluoresce, a bright green color which was just amazing. After everything has reacted, I sealed the vial with some Teflon tape, poured in some more water, along with a few drops of pyridine for good measure, screwed on the lid, and now I had two beautiful vials with fluorescent powder suspended inside. I still really wanted to try and get the blue complex, I even had about a milliliter of pyridine still left, so I ran the procedure again, but this time with even more pyridine, but I ended up producing even more of the green complex, which was pretty sad, but on the upside, I now had two vials of it. After I was done with the whole project, I was now left with a pretty big collection of fluorescent things, which just looks amazing, I mean, there's nothing better for a chemist than some pretty colored compounds. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this video and the whole series. It has been a great deal of fun and effort to make, and if you enjoyed it, you can like the video and subscribe to my channel. I would also like to thank BM Chemistry again for providing me with reagents for my videos, and as always, big thanks go to all of my Patreons, I would especially want to thank Isaac Von Liu for becoming my first $10 Patreon, I really appreciate it. Big thanks also go to my $5 Patreons, who are R2D2, Riley Reprobo, Joseph Kudi and MI. If you would also like to support my work and gain access to some spicy videos like making dynamite or potassium chlorate, you can consider becoming a Patreon and see you guys in the next video.